I've been watching a lot of Texas Smash, that's where I come from. Hmm. Okay. And so I've been studying their players and studying their habits and whatnot, and trying to see like what they punish. And uh, man, why do they take they take forever, and my sets are very quick. It doesn't matter if I'm winning or losing; they're all quick. And I'm like, damn. So when no you say that, really. so when you say like, your your sets are very quick, either the games are very polarizing, is what you're saying. Either you destroy who you're fighting, or you get destroyed for the most part. Y yes. Okay. I think what's happening here is you're hitting a ceiling where you're playing, oh, no. and this is not about. This is a good thing that we're identifying this early, right? You're hitting a ceiling. However, the ceiling is not that bad. What's happening is that you are playing against players who you may be better than, and you're not adjusting because you don't have to. And then when you fight someone who's better than you, you're not adjusting, and that's why you're losing. So you can destroy people who are scrubs. You can destroy people who might be in the newer to mid area. If someone's like going even with you, if they don't know the matchup, you might destroy them too. But then you fight someone who's even the slightest bit better, and it's just GGs because yeah. they're not missing techs. They're not recovering weird. They're not rolling in. They're not dropping shield. They are buffering options out of disadvantage. It's like, okay, well now what's going on? The number one thing I can say that you can do is if you're fighting someone who is truthfully better than you whether or not you know them like let's say not personally but like say you know them uh from your scene it's like okay it's the top player i'm about to fight i know he has like he has results he's probably a good player or he is a good player i'm probably going to lose or if it's someone who you have no idea who they are and they prove to you that they're better than you so if someone is proving to you that they are better than you what you have to do to adjust is of course and i say this all the time play patiently and slow down okay assess what yeah. they are doing even if you're playing a fast character like Mithra, you can still play her patiently. That does not mean you have to walk around like this. And this is not the this is not the definition of playing patient. Playing patiently would be like, okay, if you're down here and we're dashing back and forth, I'm gonna wait for you to make some sort of mistake, and I'm gonna throw up my safe pokes. And let's say if you never make a mistake, I'm going to try and take space and scare you and back you into a corner. Or if you happen to overextend, I have somewhere to go and I can try and get some sort of reversal. That would be play that would be playing patiently. Okay. If someone is diff genuinely better than you, they can they can sauce you out just based on reads, okay? Because like let's say for example, oh I, I knock you down with a dash attack, I say eighty five percent of people, if they happen to get hit by a dash attack, once they have to tech, they're gonna tech roll away. So he goes dash attack into another dash attack. He's not reinventing the wheel, but now you're off stage and now you're getting outskilled by his ledge trapping ability, for example. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can be off stage in a game in under 10 seconds, under five seconds, if they're crazy enough. They just go like this, one, two, three, go, hit you once, hit you again. Now you're off stage and it's been 15 seconds. Now you've taken 40 at least, or you might even die. As far as that, you'll see a lot of players do this when they start a game too. It's three, two, one, go. And they'll, guess, they'll come down and sometimes they jump back or they'll dash back and forth and try and feel each other out, right? Similar to a boxing match. They don't go three, two, one, go and just clash in the middle. If someone is a much better player than you and they know for a fact, let's say if, if I'm like seated like four, three, two, or one in the tournament and I have to fight you round two or round three of winners, and I'm probably going to destroy you, I'm not going to respect you, right? So let's say if I am the top player or like a top four player at your tournament, it's three, two, one, go. And I go like this immediately, or I go like this and come down like that immediately because I just don't care. Because if I happen to be wrong on the first interaction, like, I know for a fact if I am the better player, that I'm probably going to be able to bring it back somewhere else. But if you come down and you're scared, let's say it's 3, 2, 1, go, and you don't do the aggressive move, you come down like this, and you kind of like dash back and forth like this, or you like jump mm -hmm. back. If I just come down like this, or like this, and you're like, oh shit, you back away like that, right? You back away over to the corner. Now, I'm under the stage on your side. I have stage control immediately, and you've just shown me your hand that you don't trust yourself to fight me. This is where you might want to try and call someone's bluff, and it's a very gray area here, because if someone is ultra-aggressive off-rip like this, you could try and make a play, and that play would be come down and shield, okay? If they come down and go like this right off the start of the game, they might be insane. I, I really don't suggest to anybody at any level of play as your opening move to be a grab like that. Right. Just because it's too unsafe. Because like let's say if you are the in quotations worse of the two players or you're the scared player and you go like this, just out of autopilot, because that's just how you start a game, and they go like this, like to start, you could just right. smash them or go get a grab yourself. And they'd be throwing massively. The most aggressive thing someone could or should do in most cases is come down with an aerial like this, right? right. And then like throw something out right here. Or if they really think that they can land a dash attack instantly, then sure. But even that would be kind of on the too aggressive spot. Or too aggressive option, I should say. Um, coming down like this and landing in the center of the stage is trying to claim center stage immediately and say, okay, you have to now fight to get back into the center and try and box me out. And I have all the space behind me so if things get crazy, I can escape if I want to. 
the more confident player will push right up like this. And this transitions into any game as well. If you play Call of Duty, if you play uh, basically any shooting game as well, better players are typically much more aggressive. Same thing with fighting games. If I know my combos, I know my character, I know the matchup, I'm confident in my movement, I'm not going to hang out back here and wait for you to do something. I'm just going to go ahead and run you over because I'm just better. So if I get a chance to just, like, let's say, come down and fight you as the better player, how do you counterplay that as a person mm -hmm. who's trying to assess the situation? So what you can do when you're coming down here is you can try and play some defense off rip so you can come down with like an attack right and just to like show that you're willing to throw something out immediately so if they do come down like this you might be able to actually catch them if they try and be over aggressive right or you can come down throw out like a down tilt immediately or you can go for like a shield rather than putting yourself in the corner or just dashing and doing nothing okay dashing and doing nothing is okay in some situations let's say if you have like a projectile like it's sheet needles or falco laser or something like that but more often than not and i've done this i've had this happen to me too like when I fought, um, I think when I fought Black Twins back in the day, when I fought, uh, I fought Til Tilde a couple times, whether it's on Elite Smash or if it's on stream and stuff like that too. And he doesn't care. <laughs> he doesn't care who it is. It's not even like he doesn't respect me as a player or anything like that. It's he doesn't respect anybody in Elite Smash at least because it doesn't matter in that regard. So he's not going to try and assess the situation. He's just like, I know I'm better than you, so I'm going to kill you. <laughs> right and that's totally fine <laughs> so i thought i always had that mentality at all times so here's the thing you can work on that too we'll get out of this game quickly just let this okay. end so what i can say as far as how do you build that confidence to fight against the better player one of the things you can do or one of the things that i've i've done in the past and a lot of other higher level players will do this is they will assess someone's aggression or confidence and then try and make them pay for it so if i can see okay three two one go we start the game and you just get off the platform and dash at me immediately i can say that you're probably going to try and set the tone for the entire game in that way mm -hmm. okay so if you are going to try and do that to me let's say you're the more aggressive player and i'm trying to play defense here i'm probably going to try and catch you overextending as much as i can and when we do get to those those threat zones or those burst zones where you could post up and start going for empty hops, I'm going to assume that your spacing is also going to be quite good. You can basically sum it up with one sentence almost with regards to what we have to do because it literally is the answer to what I was just about to show you. So let's just jump down here. So if it's three, two, one, go, I'm going to come down like this and try and hit you, right? So I don't right. want you, I don't want you to be the aggressive player. I want you to be yourself, right? So I want you, we're going to be from, we're going to be talking about this from the perspective of yourself. So let's go back up here for a second. So you just come down normal and I'm going to go one, two, three, go like this. You're going to like, let's say, like come down with a shield or forward tilt or whatever. If you see, like I said, if I were to come down ultra, ultra aggressive and go three, two, one, go and go for a grab, then I'm just insane. That kind of shit should not happen as far as the first move of a game. If anything, I'm going to come down aggressive and try and hit you with something. It's either going to be like a landing fair into like a rising fair. Or I'm going to come down and go for like a down tilt or something that I could probably get a combo starter with or something to try and oppress you into the corner okay so what you would want to do in this situation here is you would try and take into consideration that the tempo that this person is going to play is going to be very aggressive and in that with that being said more often than not if, if someone is going to be very aggressive they're not going to be grabbing you a ton they're going to try and focus more so on having good spacing so they don't have to go for grabs okay they're going to go for grabs if they now can if they've believed now that they've actually conditioned you to be completely scared and you are shielding a lot Okay, mm -hmm. and this is where things can snowball for you and you'll start to lose because, okay, as soon as I know that you're going to be scared all the time and you'll see Tilde do this all the time where he'll get somebody in a really bad spot and he'll start to push them and they're just shielding the entire time. That would be like download complete in that regard. So what you can do to try and combat someone who is playing ultra aggressive or trying to scare you or anything, being aggressive coming off the platform at the start and just trying to push you into the corner, this is where you're going to rely on your movement and you are going to be playing a little bit of hit and run so that you're punishing them for overextending because aggression is overextending more often than not. Aggression typically is I'm going to try and attack you in some way or call you out in some way, not necessarily based on nothing, but more so based on your fear. I'm hoping that you're scared. So if I just run at you, I want you to shield or jump away from me or dash away from me. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't expect you to try and hit me back if you're actually scared. That's why when someone's in shield, they hold your shield. If I go like this, I'm walking on you, expecting you to not do anything. Right. right. If I if I thought you were just gonna up out a shield, I'll smash out the shield immediately. I wouldn't do that. Right. That's why it typically won't happen either at low percent. Low percent. So if you're at low percent, and I can't kill you. Like you probably shouldn't be scared. 
right? Mm -hmm. But also if I have like, let's say, for even stocks or if I'm losing the game, if I try and push you and you're scared, then that, that situation should not happen. You shouldn't be scared and you should be able to tell if you should or shouldn't be scared within the game, within the confines of the game to say, okay, let's say I'm up by two stocks, they're at 150 and they're trying to like bully me. Like what's going on here? He gives us match out the shield and kill them. So that, that kind of situation should not be happening to you. So if it is happening to you, this is what you want to do. So come back over here for a second. Why is it that he's the one losing and I'm the one winning and yet you're not the one playing scared? Probably because they're insane or, <laughs> or they have like, let's say a, a game lead on you. If they're up by a game and they're trying to just sauce you up or whatever, then it's a little different. Cause like, okay, well, I know I'm better than this person. I kind of been messing around this game and they, they got me a little bit, but I'm going to see if I can just do something mm -hmm. cheeky and get them shook. So even if I lose this game, like I got a clip, which you shouldn't be doing in tournament, but some people, they just don't care. <laughs> They'll just do mm -hmm. that. Right. With regards to, let's say if someone's playing ultra aggressive, what you can try and do is this is where you're going to be leaning on your, uh, bait, bait and punish. Okay. You're going to be leaning on bait and punish here. So that if, if someone does come down aggressive, I'm pretty sure there's the standard character has 19 moves unless they have a Zare or like let's say mm -hmm. like special inputs and stuff like that. But the average character I think has 19 moves. Only obviously one of them is grab. Okay. So if someone's throwing out things and let's say trying to harass you, this would be something that you also have to go behind behind the scenes and do for yourself is look at the frame data of a character to know if they're doing things that are trying, if they're doing things that are actually not safe on your shield or in front of you. So if I go like right. this and you run away, that's a huge mistake. If you get caught off guard, like let's say you're in the midst of running away and I throw out a dash attack and you just, you're already running. So that's a little, a little bit different. But let's say I completely miss in front of you. If I go like this, I miss a grab right in front of you. And I, right. I don't think this is, I don't think that you are this player. I'm just saying hypothetically, because I think that you would know, okay, if he misses a grab, I can do something here. But what I'd be trying to do, and I talked about this in the past as well, is you're almost having a tug of war or like a very slow burning arm wrestle with someone when they happen to be better than you. Because the same thing with tug of war or same thing with arm wrestling is you can be much weaker than the opponent, but win thanks to your technique. So what does that look like in Smash? In Smash, if someone is overextending or trying to get combo starters or trying to be flashy and trying to do all these crazy things to you to try and like either get a clip or put on as much damage as possible or not respecting your character's options, even if your character, like it could even be the ditto. If I just think I'm better than you, I might not respect the fact that you have like a frame 10 up be out of shield, right? Or I think, or no, frame 10 up smash things, frame nine up, be out of shield. Either way, I'm just, I just don't care. So I'm landing on you like this. I'm going like this. I'm hitting you with lightning buster, uh, mm -hmm. point blank, basically. And if you don't hit me, they're like, okay, I see that this person is scared. But if you're putting me in my place, all of a sudden it's like, oh shit. I not, not even like I thought I was better, but it doesn't matter if I'm better. It doesn't matter if my execution on things is better. If you're getting punishes like jab and dash attacks and forward tilts and down tilts, and you're getting lightning busters or side Bs, and that's all you're getting. You're not really getting crazy combos or like footstool stuff or anything like that. All you're getting is punishes. And this is the slow burn that I'm talking about. If every single time that we clash, because I'm trying to press the issue on you, if every single time, if every single time that we clash, you come out victorious by 10% or 6% or 14% or whatever it might be, now mm -hmm. I have to slow down. But if you get tilted, but let's say I go in and do some crazy combo and I think I can just do whatever I want. Now, if I have a percent lead and I now, let's say, go from the bait and punish style as the person has a lead, now you're going to be going over, you're going to be overextending on me with your dash attacks and dash grabs and F smashes and all types of stuff like that. So this, this is where a game can snowball in the wrong direction, right? If someone gets in there and gets like a small combo and they're playing properly, they can run away with that lead completely. So I would say a character like Fox can kind of thrive off of something like that. But even against Fox too, if he tries to come down with like Nair into Jab or Nair into F Smash or Nair into whatever on your shield, and you know a character like Fox is not going to grab very often, if ever, if you let him hit your shield and all you get is up B, eventually he's going to be doing like Nair into Dash Away or Nair into Rising Nair and Jump Away. In which case, now you don't have crazy pressure on your shield. Like, because if he was to come down and do Nair and then immediately start jabbing and you try to like grab him or something. And now you get hit for that, and then he knocks you into a tech day situation, then you're off stage. So I guess to try and sum that up and make it a little bit clearer for you, if somebody's playing ultra aggressive, you want to have that steel curtain defense. Okay? Mm -hmm. If they want to run at you, give them the space. Just give them some space to make a mistake. 
but don't run so far away that when they make their mistake, they can continue to make more mistakes because you're not in position to punish them.